three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Oh no. Kato. Doggone it. Three, two, one. Oh no. Oh, we had a Kato.
three, two, one. Oh, I had a Kato. Going in five, four, three, two, one. Well, hey everybody, this is Kevin, and welcome to a special unboxing video. Uh, this is one of those that uh, I wish I didn't have to make, but I do. And, uh, but, you know, all's well that ends well. Uh, as you saw in the intro there, I I suffered four Kato's, and I was really leery about reaching out to Estes at all. The first one, I'm like, well, you know, just one of those, you know, fluke deals. And then the second one, I'm like, well, hmm. And it was a different stamp number, so I'm like, well, no consistency. Then I had my third Kato, same stamp number, and then I reached out to Estes after that. After, let me show you what I got here, actually. So this was the first Kato you saw. This was back on January 24th to 22, and this was the spectacular boom on the pad with the high flyer, and it was stamped uh, K, March 20th, 1920, oh, 19, <laughs> 2021. If it was 1921, we'd really have issues. But no, it's uh, 320 uh, 21. Uh, so, and that's the only K stamp that I had. But you can see it just blew the nozzle right through. There's nothing on either end. This just blew up on the pad. Not much damage to the high flyer, if you remember, just the broken launch lug. Then I had this one on February 18th, 23. Uh, now, this was an E12 4, but this was the J221022. Remember that number. It comes back to haunt me time and time again. Same issue, blew the nozzle right out. Okay. Then I had this one, my high flyer again, and this one exploded a little off the pad. You saw it kind of arc over into the into the desert and crush the body tube. And that's where I finally drew the line and said, okay, that's the second time with this stamp number. I've had it. Three Kato's on E12 motors. I'm going to let Estes know. And this was on April 1st. You, you know, you'd think it'd be a great April Fool's joke, but unfortunately it wasn't a joke. So that was number three. Blew the nozzle right out. So I contacted Estes. Estes said, well, uh, send us pictures of, you know, your motors. So I sent him a picture of these three. And uh, they said, well, well, we'll make things right for you. Then I got a, a shipping notice saying something was on its way. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, maybe they'll send me some motors or who knows what. So in the meantime, I'm still waiting and I'm waiting, and the next Saturday comes along, which is April 8th. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go fly again. And you saw the most recent video with the RAV1 E12-6 right after liftoff on a J221022. I should have learned my lesson the first two times with that stamp, but I didn't. Nozzle blew right out. I had another Kato. Uh, this one destroyed the bottom half of the rocket. I'll show you right here. Um, I'll probably never throw this out because this thing is just, it's such a display piece now. But uh, this one just blew right out. It busted a hole in the side, blew the side panel out here. Um, not really much other damage, um, but it did. I don't know if it's kind of come through here. You can see the heat when it blew out. It actually melted the paint and it bubbled a little bit. Look at that. You know, it used to be smooth like back here but no it just it just it had enough and uh so i'm going to retire the bottom half of the rav1 rav2 is currently on the bench right now you'll eventually see a, a build video of that coming out shortly i'm just about done with it so i had this kato while waiting for this box to come because <laughs> i was tired of kato's so that all being said let me get these out of the way let's see what estes sent um I did check the invoice and I know what they sent, and uh, but you might not know. So, just gonna let it be a surprise. It does say flammable solid on the side, so what does that tell you? On this side too. So that tells me we do have some motors coming. And I, I, I told him, you know, and I showed him, you know, it's the E12-4 and the E12-6. 
uh, specifically from that J stamp, but um, there was that other one, the K, K stamp too. Okay, so right off the bat here, they made good and they got me a new High Flyer XL. Um, I have, I'll just to be completely honest, I've since rebuilt this High Flyer XL since the last Kato, but I'll, it is hardly original anymore. It has been rebuilt so many times from so many. Uh, incidences that uh, I, I think it's time to uh, maybe start fresh. So um, I accept this from Estes. I thank them. Um, it's about all they can do. You know, they, they can replace rockets, they can replace motors, but they can't replace the time and effort spent into building. That's on you, the modeler. So, um, and there's nothing they can do about that. So I, I wouldn't expect anything from them on that. But they made right and got me a replacement high flyer XL. So very cool. And let's see what else we got in here. We got a box that says handle carefully. Well, I can imagine why. Okay, so here's the thing with these motors. I will be happy with anything other than the J-Stamp. If we can get something maybe more recent. Just that was a bad batch. I don't know. Whoever was working the machine that day was having a bad day or something. I don't know. But, uh... All right. Ooh. Well, check this out. I got a nice 65th anniversary sticker. That's very nice, actually. It says summer of 23 with an old VW van, or they called it a bus, <laughs> on the beach. That's really nice, actually. I like that sticker. That was a surprise. Uh, we got our packing slip. Uh, can't quite make out the name, but... Um, I can pretend it says Vernestis, right? But no, it won't. All right, got two packs of motors in here. E12-4 and E12-6. Let's see the stamp on the side. If we can even see it. They always just, for some reason, find a way to be on the other side. Oh, there it is. Okay, I don't know. It says, I... 2010-20? Yeah. October 20th, 2020. That's actually older <laughs> than uh, the ones I was having issues with. That is interesting. I did not expect that. Now, what's the stamp on these? I think they deliberately rotate these so you can't see the stamps. I mean, seriously, what are the odds? All six of them are rolled that way. I wonder if they deliberately stamp them. I really don't want to open it. But you know what? I'm going to have to because I'm going to have to fly it. But you know what? No? That's interesting. I wonder what that it says, the number right here. I wonder what 8-15 means. And this one says 10 of 21. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to open this anyway because I need to fly and I need motors. So let's just see what stamp code is on here. I'm really surprised to see that that's a three-year-old pack of motors direct from Estes. That really surprises me. Definitely uh, sealed a lot better than the ones I get at Hobby Lobby. Oh my goodness, guys. Are you kidding me? J221022. Oh no. What am I going to do? Ah, the dilemma. I specifically told them that these are the stamp codes I'm having trouble with. And that's what they sent me. Well, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, guys, because I need to fly. And uh, this is what they sent me. Now, if the damage to the previous motors were 
when they were in the custody of Hobby Lobby, if they were dropped or, or chilled and then heated and chilled and heated and went through temperature cycles, um, then maybe that's what caused the cracking in the eventual Kato, but I won't lie to you. I'm a little leery of this. Look at fresh motor, stamp code. Kato, blown out nozzle. Same code. Well, <laughs> this video did not come at, work out the way I thought it was going to, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I'm a little disappointed. Um, there's probably nothing wrong with them, though. And I've got, I, I have no other choice but to fly them. Because last time I was at Hobby Lobby, all their motors had that stamp code on it. So I guess that's, it is what it is, right? I hate that saying, but what else are you going to do? So, uh, this is different, but again, these are like three years old. I can barely see the stamp on it, and it was, yeah, 2020. So, uh, <laughs> there we go. Well, thanks for watching this a little impromptu box opening. Uh, I am going to enjoy having another High Flyer XL in the fleet. And, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt me to start maybe trying some D motors, uh, with these test flights. I don't necessarily need an E, although I'd like to get it up there high enough where the chute has time to open up. But, um, you know, I'm getting up to 500 feet with the RAV1. Uh, I should have the same with the RAV2 eventually. So if I get half of that on a D motor, that's going to put me up at 250. Um, that should be plenty of uh, altitude to get a good chute deployment. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to do some uh, decision making here. So, with that, guys, I'm going to call it a video. You have a great day. Thanks for watching. Hope you uh, were surprised as I am to see that. So until next time, guys, God bless. We will see you next time at the Launchpad. Take care. Bye-bye.